Folks, so the story of Mississippi is unbelievable. It is strange. It is astounding. And you're sitting here going, how in the hell does this actually happen? So a mother in Jackson, Mississippi, reported her child missing to the police. They go, sorry, can't help you. Then she finds out that an off-duty Jackson police officer struck and killed her son, Dexter Wade, as he was crossing a highway, leaving his mother's home in March. The Hines County Coroner's Office identified him using fingerprints and information from prescribed medication police found at the scene. Police claim they couldn't reach Wade's mother. Hmm. Better seen Wade Robinson left his body, and this is crazy, y'all, they left his body unclaimed at the morgue for months before burying him in an unmarked grave on the Hines County Penal Farm. Joining me now is civil rights attorney Ben Crump and Betterstein Wade Robinson, Dexter's mom. I, I first of all, I, I am uh, sorry uh, for your loss. Um, you were, your son went missing in March. When did you find out what happened to him and where he was? I found out in August the 24th. They called me and they called me about 11 o'clock and the detective said, I found your son. And I went to say, well, for he, she said, another detective, Gerard, going to come out and tell you, you know, what happened. So he called me about four. He made it there around 530 or something to six. And he said, I'm sorry. Your son is deceased. So this and I saw he, a crime. He went I, I, I'm confused. He went missing in March. When did you file a missing persons report? I filed a missing report person report in March the 14th. So you, you literally File a missing persons report in March. Yes. And they identified who he was. Yes. So we're not talking about, let's just be clear, we're not talking about the New York City Police Department, the Houston Police Department. We're not talking about uh, a, a very large city. Uh, and I'm not demeaning Jackson. But if there's a body in the morgue and has been actually identified, and then they claim, oh, they couldn't reach you, but you filed the missing persons report, which meant your information was right there. You, you, you had to put it on a sheet of paper, name, phone number, email, address, all that stuff. Yes. B they knew who he was rolling on the first day. Say it again. They knew, his, they knew his identification on March 5th when they first hit and killed him. And so, <laughs> all right, so this is what I need to understand. Okay. <clears throat> they, so he gets hit by an off duty police officer. Um, what have they actually said to you? To explain this, I mean, this is, I, I, this is just beyond, for me, explanation. Well, they haven't even came to me and said anything. The only thing they did was come to me and said that he had, dis, you know, he, he had deceased. And other than that, uh, I was asking the coroner some question, and he said I had to call the coroner. So I called the corner the next day because it was too late to call that day. So I called the corner the next day. So the corner told me I was going off on him about why he didn't take him and friend, why he didn't do this, why he didn't do that. He said, Miss Wade, Miss Wade, Miss Wade. I didn't have to do all that. Dexter had his pill ball, several pill balls in his pocket. Then his name was on him. So on the 6th, that Monday, I called mental help, where you go, Heinz Behavior Help, and I called them and got next to Kenyon. 
He said, I tried to call. He said, well, he didn't say it that day. He didn't say he tried to call that day. But anyway, he said he tried to call me, but he didn't get in touch with me. So he passed it on to JPD because really that's their job to come out and let a person know that they little one is deceased. So he passed it on to JPD. So he tried to make several attempts before they even, before they even buried him. He made several, several attempts to see had they found the next of kin. And they kept telling him they hadn't found the next of kin. And then they got approval in April to put him in the, in the uh, party field down there. And so he called several times after that, even after they had got him approved. He called several times after that. And they still said they hadn't found him. So on July the 14th, they laid him to rest. Roland? Yeah, go ahead, Ben. What is even more outrageous is the fact that Miss Bettersteen Wade is the named plaintiff in a wrongful death lawsuit against the Jackson Police Department for killing her brother, who had had a stroke, had been out of the hospital 10 days, and they body slammed him and killed him. An officer was convicted and imprisoned for killing her brother. She had been doing interviews. She had been to court every day through two criminal trials. They had depositions in the civil suit. They absolutely knew who Bettersteen Robinson Wade was. And Miss Wade believes they intentionally did not come to her house to notify her about her son because she felt that they were afraid that there was going to be another wrongful death lawsuit against the Jackson Police Department because the officer who hit her was in his uh, Jackson Police Department issued vehicle. There's a question whether he was on duty or not. They say he was not on duty, but because on March 5th when they hit and killed him, they never told Miss Wade or her family anything. They they cannot accept this with a leap of faith. You kill my brother, and then you try to deny doing anything wrong there. You deny the wrongful death lawsuit. Now, you kill my son, and you don't tell me for six months that you killed my son. Before I go to my panel with questions, uh, Ben, uh, so, okay, so, so they say the off-duty officer hit him. Was there an investigation? Was the officer given a breathalyzer? Was the car impounded? Was there an actual investigation into this death? No. No. They did not do anything to the officer. They just took his car to uh, uh, Hicks, uh, pound, I guess, you know, Hicks. They took it to Hicks uh, towing service, came, got the car. But they did not get no vessel lives or none of that. They didn't do nothing to him. They didn't give him no citation. They didn't give him nothing. Not nothing. They didn't take nothing from him. They just took something from my son. Took his fluids from him. Didn't give him an autopsy or nothing. I don't have no pictures, nothing to show that it's, that's actually my son. I don't have no fingerprints or nothing. They said he took fingerprints which I believe Mr. Elliot probably did take fingerprints. I'm not going to say he didn't. Um, but I'm just saying, I don't have anything to say that's him in that grave. I have 672. I have a number, 672, so that's him. That's on the pole. That's in the Pauper's Field, the graveyard for the indigents. They have all these poles out there, Roland Martin, and on each pole they have a number. And he is number 672, and we're going to exhume his body. We're petitioning the court to do that, and we're going to have an independent autopsy performed, and then we're going to give him the proper funeral that he deserves uh, and try to get Miss Bettersteen 
some measure of justice for her son and her two granddaughters. Questions, um, Joy, you first. Um, let me just say what is heartbreaking about this whole evening. It's about lack of humanity, lack of treatment of humanity of our fellow humans. Um, and I can't help believe that if he were anyone else, uh, you would have gotten greater understanding, greater consideration, um, greater justice for your son already. What are you asking um, from the from the city to do at this point? Well, at this point, you know, uh, they can't say that it wasn't intentionally because now the more I look at it and the more things more things put out here, it's intentional because. I gave them my address the second time. So I can't say. So they need to honor up to it. They need to do right by me, the suffering, the pain, <coughs> and everything I've been through, the looking, the just saying, can he come home? What, where is he? Disappeared off the face of earth. I never saw a person disappear off the face of earth if you don't even know nobody has seen him, nobody know nothing. Jackson police can't find him, nobody. He's not in the morgue, he not nowhere. So I mean they need to be held accountable for this. Amen. Mustafa. Well, Miss Wade, uh, I'm praying for justice for you and your family. <coughs> then I'm curious. Um, uh, is there not supposed to be some form of a process when a police officer is involved with um, a homicide by an automobile? Of course, we know um, many times it's with a firearm. So uh, w what's the normal process? Well, I'm quite sure now, me, as a knowledge, that they should have gave him a breathalyzer. They should have took, you know, they should have took him and got you know, the proper uh, documents and stuff that need needed from him. They should have called the highway patrol. I mean, everybody should have been at the incident. It shouldn't have just been a small amount of people there. Everybody should have came to that incident. And they should have notified me in a decent manner of time if they got the information. You know, they should have notified me. They should have came to my door. What is for a knock? I mean, mm -hmm. don't you don't we have doors, doorbells? I mean, you can come to the door and ring the doorbell. If I'm not here, leave me a card. What happened to the U.S. mail? Like, I mean, we got mail service. Mm -hmm. I mean, they sort of send me a letter and say, hey, Miss Wade, you need to come down to JPD in Porton. Would you please come down? Or would you please call up? You know, yeah. something. I mean, something. Yeah. Randy, yes, I mean, it's just something. Yeah, my, my absolute deepest condolences to you, um, really. And, you know, I, I, I'm i thinking, I saw the article where they said they tried to call you, but they couldn't get in touch. It was the wrong number or something. And it made me think about, I have friends, when they go on a first date with someone that they don't know, in, in, in one minute, in two minutes of a search, they can find out where this man lives, his telephone number, his place of employment, everything. I mean, those officers, somebody could have contacted you. I mean, not in today's society, there is no excuse. At minimum, this is negligence. Well, for the first of all, uh, when you said notify me and for the phone number concern, I went and got evidence. The number they got for mental health is the number I still have. Mm. So that's just something that they said. Mm -hmm. I made sure I went and got a number to where they gave him, you know, gave them mm -hmm. to make sure that they gave them the proper number. And the emergency contact on there is my number I have now. So it was no reason. But they even, like I say, they even had a second chance. Because I gave them my information. But what's so killing about this whole thing is that when I put out a civil alert, I asked them to put a civil alert out on him two times. 
The first time they didn't do it, I called the chief of police. I said, what is it? I didn't tell him now. I didn't tell him what was going on. But I asked him, how do it go by getting civil alert if a, you know, missing person? He asked me Dexter name. Then he said he passed it on, asked me who the detective was. I told him Detective Neal. He said, uh, let me get with the detective and I'll see. Detective came back to me and he said, send a photo of you. Send a photo, a clear photo of your son. Then he said, I'm going to get off in a few minutes. Won't you bring it to UPS and I'll take it tomorrow and I'll make sure I get all the documents and everything and send it to the highway patrol to put him on civil alert. I waited two weeks, two weeks, nothing. So I called highway patrol, asked them why they hadn't put my son on civil alert. She said, who is your son? I said, Dexter Alex Wade. She said, hold on a minute. Let me go look and see what's going on. She came back to the phone. She said, Miss Wade, I'm sorry. I went all the way back to 2000. I do not have a Dexter Wade. My Lord. Um, no, what's the, um, Bean, what's, ne what's next? Uh, Miss Wade and her family have asked us to inquire of the Department of Justice uh, to open an investigation because they do not trust the uh, Jackson, Mississippi local officials, nor the Mississippi state uh, uh, investigators, because the attorney general, Roland, I know you got to go, but the attorney general, when her brother was killed and the officer was convicted, the Trump Republican attorney general filed an affidavit of appeal on behalf of the officer that the, was convicted of killing her brother and went against the black prosecutor in Jackson, Mississippi. I have never seen Roland Martin, a uh, DA, go against a local prosecutor for prosecuting somebody. But that's what has happened here. That's why Miss Wade cannot trust them. And I believe when she says it's intentional, she has the facts to back it up that they were not going to tell her about her son. They were going to try to sweep it under the rug. Uh, indeed. Ms. Robinson, Ben Crump, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Roland Martin. Thank you. Folks, a few days ago, Jackson Mayor Chokia Lumumba uh, had this to say about Dexter's death. We have found ourselves in the national spotlight recently in the city. Many of you have heard of the tragic loss of Mr. Dexter Wade. I think it is important that we recognize the tremendous loss that his mother suffered and his family has suffered, and that we lift them up in our prayers collectively as a city, and that we continue to support them as a community. This is a tragic circumstance, and it is important that we understand what has taken place. Unfortunately, there was a tragic accident where Mr. Dexter Wade was walking across I-55 Highway. While he was walking across the highway, an off-duty JPD officer unfortunately struck Mr. Wade and he passed. The accident was investigated and it was determined that it was in fact an accident and that there was no malicious Unfortunately, at the time, in addition to his loss of life, there was, he was without identification. And the Jackson Police Department was unable to make an ID. The coroner's office later received his body, and they were later able to establish his identity through both fingerprints, and he also had a prescription bottle of then there were efforts, after they located the prescription bottle, to reach out to the medical provider who provided that prescription. That medical provider provided a number, which unfortunately 
was not accurate or not a good number to be used in further. And so they were unable to make contact. Somewhere in the process of them trying to locate with that number, Mr. Wade's mother later, days later, filed a missing persons report. And the failure was, is that ultimately, there was a lack of communication with the missing persons division, the coroner's office, and accident investigation. And because of that, Mr. Wade, they were unable to find uh, his family within a expeditious period of time, and he was later buried once the coroner went to the Hines County Board of Supervisors in order to get permission to do so. And so it is tragic to lose your child. It is tragic to suffer the consequences of having to bury your child before you perish. But to add insult to that trauma, it is even more difficult to not have the ability to have a proper burial for your child. And for that, we regret the circumstance that Mr. Wade's family has had to deal with. And so we continue to lift them up in prayer. I do want to be clear that at no point have we identified or did any investigation reveal that there was any police misconduct in this process and that there was any malicious intent. And so it is important that we learn from these circumstances, that we identify ways to improve communication, but it is also important that we don't confuse with community issues of police misconduct in a circumstance which honestly was an unfortunate and tragic accident. Well, we'll certainly be um, focusing on this and covering this and to see what happens next.